Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another series of our Let Us Reason videos. And we will be continuing the discussion concerning the Tawheed dilemma. However, this time we're going to shift topics. Uh, instead of talking about the spirit, as mentioned in the Quran, we're going to talk about our Lord Jesus Christ and show that yet again, according to the Quran, uh, Allah is maybe one in essence, but he is more than one person. With me here, as always, to discuss these fabulous topics, my dear <coughs> brother and friend, Sam Shamoon. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ for giving me the opportunity to be used by the power of the Holy Spirit to glorify him and to work with you. And as is my habit, we invoke the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ upon us, Amen. upon these sessions, so that by the power of the Spirit, we speak truth without error and do it for the glory and majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ so that Muslims can hear the truth and be saved and Christians strengthen in their witness <clears throat> to Muslims <clears throat> about the beauty and the majesty of God's one and only beloved Son, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So. Good to be here, but before we even get into the topic, I want to repeat what I've said in previous sessions, and I'm going to sound like a broken record, but it's vitally important we do this. We do not believe the Quran is revelation of Allah, meaning when I say Allah, meaning the God revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. We don't believe it's revelation from the true God. We don't believe the Muslim God is the true God revealed in Scripture. We don't believe the Quranic Isa is the Jesus of the New Testament, who's the Jesus of history, or the spirit presented in the Quran is the true spirit. So then why are we appealing to the Quran? We're doing it for the benefit of those Muslims who do believe the Quran is revelation from the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But I want to be clear, the Islamic Jesus is not the true Jesus revealed in the New Testament. The, the spirit uh, revealed in the Quran is not the spirit revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. And so I want to emphasize that, lest Muslims think that we're endorsing the Quranic view of Jesus. Now with that said, <clears throat> it is true that the Quran does seek to demote Jesus to the level of a mere human servant. But at the same time, the Quran makes assertions about Jesus Christ that shows he's more than a mere human servant, he's more than a man, he's greater than all creation, infinitely greater than Muhammad, subject only to Allah, who's supposed to be the true God, and yet equal with Allah in a certain sense. So he's subject to him, but at the same time equal to him. And I'm going to focus on those passages to show that a, the Quran only has a contradictory portrait of Jesus, but B, the Quran clearly testifies to Jesus' divine pre-human existence and essential equality with the Muslim God who's supposed to be the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So let's start with chapter 3, verse 45, and focus on the titles that the Quran ascribes to Jesus Christ. So in 345, what, says, what does it say? And our uh, <laughs> list, uh, well, I mean, viewers will watch this. Uh, when the angel said Mary... God gives thee good tiding of a word from him whose name is Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. High honored shall he be in this world and the next, near stationed to God. Now, I want, want us to focus on the fact that Jesus is said to be a word from him. That's right. So here is the yeah. a word from, and the him right. here obviously is in reference to yeah, because God. it says that the name of the word even says kalimat minhu ismuhu, whose name is. So the word has a personal identity. That's right. His name, his identity That's is right. the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Correct. And this is in connection to the word. So the word is a person who becomes a flesh and blood human being. So Are here you talking we see, about John 1, uh, 14 here? Well, or? yeah, because yeah. here we see the Quran is aping yep. uh, John's logos, logos, Christology, that Jesus Christ is the eternal mm -hmm. word that became flesh. And I'll unpack that when we go to the second passage. But notice, it says Jesus is a word from him, and it says this word, his name, is the Messiah, Jesus, Son of Mary. So the word is not simply God's command or God's plan. It's an actual living person that becomes a flesh yeah. and blood human being. And here's what I want to add. Uh, it's kind of amazing, really. Yeah. Kalima, kalimatun minhu, kalima is <laughs> Feminine. That's right. Yet the name is masculine. Yeah. Jesus. Is masculine. It even Ismuhu, isn't that masculine? That's right. So here yeah. you have Kalimat, which is in the feminine gender. Not Ismaha, Ismuhu. Oh, yeah, and yet it's a masculine figure. That's right. Right? So That's that right. again shows you that Muhammad is hearing what Christians are saying about Jesus. That's right. Identifying him as the word and adopting it as part of his theology to entice Christians to take him seriously, not realizing by accepting that part of Christian theology. He ends up refuting himself. Let's go to the second one. This one is where we're going to really show the connection with John's 
logos or word Christology. In chapter 4, verse 171, it's a long passage. And here's what's ironic about this passage. This passage is intended to rebuke Christians for saying Allah is a third of three and censoring them for saying that Allah has a son. And yet what it says about Jesus clearly affirms that Jesus is divine exactly. and pre-existed and became flesh. What does it say in chapter 4, verse 171? People of the book, go not beyond the bounds in your religion and say not as to God, but the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only the messenger of God. Now let's pause there. You know Arabic better than I could ever know it because it's your mother tongue. The word only is not in the Arabic. It doesn't say only the messenger. That's right. It says That's right. he was Rasulullah. Now, for those who don't know the, what the word Rasul means, it can also mean apostle. So what this is saying is Jesus, notice, he's the Messiah, al Messi. We'll impact that in future sessions, God willing. He's Messiah, al Messi, the only one called Messiah, by the way. Son of Mary, which affirms his virginal conception and birth, which we'll talk about in a future session. Rasulullah, which can be rendered as Apostle of Allah, which is supposed to be the true God. Now, for a Christian, you can amen all of that. Thus far, what the Quran says, we have no objections because if you go to Hebrews 3 verse 1, Jesus is said to be the Apostle That's right. and High Priest of our confession. So the Bible acknowledges Jesus is the Apostle of God the Father. And here's what I want to add. We already demonstrated that according to the Quran, the Spirit is also an apostle. Is the apostle. That's right. That's so right. you have Jesus, the Word, Apostle of God, and the Spirit, Apostle of God. Now let's continue further into the passage. So it says, was only the messenger of God and his word that he committed to Mary and a spirit from him. Let's park it there. You know the Arabic again. So the only reason I'm appealing to Arabic is because you can confirm what I'm saying. There it says, kalimat. Kalimatuhu, Kalimatuhu, his word, Al-Qaha, Illa right. Maryam. Al-Qaha means cast down. That's right. And his evolved word, what? Cast down yeah. to Mary. Now, yeah. a spirit proceeding from him, Ruh and Min. Now, if you say he is the word that came down to Mary, that implies that before he came down, he was already there, up there with Allah. Pre-existence. How do you get around you know. that? A child is born, a son is, is given. given to us. And here the word comes down to Mary, which means that before he came down, he was with Allah, his word, and then it says a spirit from him. Now that makes perfect sense. Why? Because before Jesus was born and conceived from his blessed mother to take on flesh, he would have existed as spirit. Prior to becoming flesh, Jesus, as the eternal word, the divine word, would have existed as spirit. He would have been bodiless, immaterial, like the Father is, the Father is spirit, right. Son is spirit, the Holy Spirit is spirit, meaning bodiless, immaterial. <clears throat> Galatians 4, 6 said, God sent his, the spirit yeah. of his Son. The, son of the spirit of his Son, the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So yeah. catch it here, Jesus existed as spirit when he was there with God, when he came down as his word to become flesh for Mary's. Thus far, what you just read in the Quran, is basic Johannine Logos Christology, That's the right. word Christology of John. The eternal word with God the Father, who came down as a spirit to become flesh from his blessed mother. Now, does the Bible say that Jesus, before he became flesh, and now, in virtue of his divine nature, is a divine spirit? In other words, as God, who possesses the divine nature, he is spirit by nature, because to be God is to be spirit. Yes, 1 Corinthians 15, 45 says, the first Adam became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Thus far, what we read in the Quran, no Christian would have a problem with. Amen. He is the Messiah. He is the virgin-born son of Mary. He is the apostle of God the Father. He is God's word that came down to Mary and came down from God as a spirit because prior to coming down to Mary, he didn't have a flesh body. He became an embodied spirit when he took on flesh from Mary. So which part of that verse would a Christian have a problem with? Nothing so far. So far we agree, right? But now let's bring out the implication in this session. If he is the word of God, kalimatuhu, his word, my question to the Muslim is, has there been a time in which Allah has existed without his word? And the answer should be no, because if you say yes, that means Allah was mute. Exactly. And he was lacking something essential right. that he had to acquire later on. He's so a profound complete. change occurred in his being. But they would tell you that Allah is perfect and immutable. So Allah has always existed with his word. But if Jesus is his word, 
and his word is eternal, always existing with Allah, then Jesus has the word always existed with Allah. Therefore, Jesus is not a creature, but eternal, co-equal with God, who then became flesh. Now, how do you get around that? And we're talking about the begotten now. And uh, this is a deep topic, of course, as you can see. And we need to continue yes. this in another uh, session. Most definitely. And uh, hopefully you've been enjoying this uh, other part of the Tawheed Dilemma. So far we have demonstrated that Allah is one in essence, two in person so far. Yes, Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.